everybody. I feel alive. Oh, oh, oh. Do we, leave we need to be daft to be able to win. Yes, welcome to my half yearly review. Yeah, you weren't expecting that. Well, actually, it's five months because we're still in June. Haven't completed June, but it's been a bit of a Apart from an epic ultra. Lawrence of Arabia, yes. It's been quite a restful month, yes, I know. So what do I mean by being daft? D-A-F-T, yes. Determination, adaptability, flexibility, and the key thing is you need to be prepared to transform. Well, the actual word was change. We need to be able to change. But obviously if I use the letter the word change would be a letter C, so that wouldn't make daft, would it be D-A-F-C? Which isn't really a word, is it? Or is it a football club, soccer club, soccer club, D-A-F-C? But my word, what an epic, epic first half of the year it is. You could call it the midterms, yeah, in political ways, but often the incumbent in midterms has a bit of a battering. But for me, being the insurgent upstart, I've had a tremendous, tremendous year, thanks to a lot of you guys. <laughs> Supporting me, leaving lots of beautiful comments, making me feel good, and boy do I feel good right now. The date right now is Monday the 19th of June. So yes, over the halfway of, of the June month, Still recovering from that epic ultra. But I'm gonna take you through month by month, like a half year review of what's been happening. For this half year so far, I've taken part in 12 races of which five of those, yes, no less than five, I came first in my age category. And I also ran a new lifetime personal best at marathon distance. You could say it's been an absolutely dream year so far yeah so going all the way back to january i you could say i started the year as i mean to go on following the disappointment at telford where i wanted to qualify at england masters 10k distance i decided last minute to enter the north lakes 10k which was on the 2nd of january and as you can imagine for those of you who know the uk the north the lake district yeah, it's um, a bit cold, wet and windy up there. And uh, yes, it was on the day before, traveling up on New Year's Day. So it was quite a commitment, but I needed to be adaptable and flexible and be prepared to change for this particular race because this was almost like the do or die. There were some other 10Ks after that, but I decided this was the one to go for to try and come top three to qualify for England Masters. The morning didn't start too well. You may recall it was a bit frosty, a bit cold, yeah. But I really gave it my all and I was so happy to come in first in my age group. So job done, winning, winning, starting the year in a winning, winning, winning frame of mind. Yes, you can tell I have a good time coming here, yeah. So the next event I took part in wasn't until the end of January, the 29th of January to be exact, which was not the Roman 9, which is a bit of an odd distance race. It's 12 kilometers. But you may recall during that race, again, I did go all out in that race. I really wanted to go gung-ho. But there was a point where I was, um, how can I put this? Um, some wild animals came across the race course, which sort of made me stop for a while. So, you know, that was a bit of a... Uh, Inconvenience, shall we say, but never before have I ever seen wild deer jump across me in a race. Yeah, never. I have come across deer in the wild before because obviously when you go trail running and around certain parts in the areas that I train in, there are these wildlife. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you come across any wildlife on your races or training. But yeah, seeing those wild deer jump across me in that race, it was pretty scary because they are pretty big, you know, stags that are, you know, with the antlers up there. Oof, they're huge, huge. And uh, yeah, so that was the month of January. So you're probably wondering what kilometrage did I do in that month? Well, I did do 251 kilometers. Yeah, not bad, eh? So that was January, off with a bang. Now we move into February, where it was more of 
consolidation. So whilst I took part in some events, it was all about getting me into marathon pace training. So the first event I took part in in February was the Warwick Half Marathon, where I ran it at an easy long run for the first X kilometers and then the latter half ran it at marathon pace, which was brilliant. Great training, absolutely loved the Warwick Half. The next event I took part in was the Hereford 10 miler. And I've only taken part, I thought it was the first time I took part in a 10 miler, but it was actually the second time. But again, it was marathon pace training. So I had quite, a, I think I had 13, 14 miles to run that day. So I ran the first four miles odd um, in training, sort of long run pace, e easy pace, zone two, whatever you want to call it. Not quite jiggy jog, yeah, patent pending. Um, but yeah, it was at uh, an easier pace. And then the 10 mile, it did actually say on the plan, 10 miles at marathon pace. So as soon as the uh, race started, I went off at marathon pace. Now, when I talk about pace, for me, it's actual effort because a lot of these events are very undulating. So I've keyed into my Garmin actual effort in terms of heart rate. So I would run to heart rate effectively. So if I went a bit too fast, the heart rate was too high, it would bleep at me. So I would slow down. Yeah, it would go beep, 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 beep. So I would slow down and then get it back into that particular zone. So I wasn't going all out racing. So the kilometrage for February was 259 kilometers. Yes, that's right, 259 kilometers. Doesn't sound much, but for me, less is more. And that'll be a theme running through all of this first half of this year. Then we come into March, and March, what? Uh, you know, we're now building up and getting ready because my goal race was London Marathon where I wanted to go sub three. And uh, so March was key events, key dates. And the first event was the Night and 20, where again, it was three laps of um, particular route. I have done the Night and 20 before, and I was really pleased with this where I'd done the first lap at an easy long run pace, and then the second two laps at marathon pace. And again, when I say pace, I keep referring to effort, marathon effort. So I wasn't going all out guns blazing, racing it hard. But to my surprise, I ran it in a new personal best for that course of two hours 20, and I won my age category. Yeah! So that was a bit of a bonus ball for me, yeah. Money for winning, yes. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Yes, I mean, do you remember Harry Enfield? Yeah, loads of money. Whoa. Anyway, yeah, I mean, what can I do with a tenner? But anyway, next race comes up, which was the Droitwich Half Marathon. Again, marathon pace effort, so I didn't want to go too hard on uh, that one. But a bit of a mixed terrain, mixed course, very steep hills in some sections. So I found that quite a challenge um, to me in terms of maintaining a particular effort. So it started easy and then picked up to marathon effort. Although I think towards the end I did kick a little. So um, yeah, because I wanted to come in sub 90 and I did and I won my age category. And for the first time ever, I got gold medal of Worcestershire County champion for V60. <laughs> Yes, that's what we like to do, winning. And the kilometrage for March, as you can remember, we stepped it up now, it's 320 kilometers for March. And that would have been the highest kilometers I would have done in any of the months for this year so far. Now, crunch time, April, yeah, yeah. Things didn't quite go to plan. Remember about being adaptable and flexible? Now, I had my accommodation canceled. It was towards the end of March, I had notification that uh, my hotel, despite having booked it in August of last year, um, they notified me that they canceled the uh, booking. And for whatever reason, um, whilst they did take the booking, they were doing some refurbishments. This is the story they gave me. I can only believe it is true. They were doing some refurbishments and it's not completed. So they canceled my booking. So I was left with no accommodation for London. And then when I looked at the accommodation alternatives, they were just skyrocket high and I thought, I can't afford this, you know, because booking weeks before London Marathon, a hotel in, in London, um, wasn't really doable for me. So I decided to enter Manchester Marathon. Now, whilst I decided to enter Manchester Marathon, 
I was going to use it as a training run and still hoping that I would get accommodation for London Marathon. But then a, a few days had passed and I decided, right, you know, I can't, it was stressing me too much in terms of the uncertainty of the accommodation at London, not having any, not knowing what to do or whatever. So I decided, right, I would change my plan and adapt my plan, yeah, because there's only one week difference between Manchester Marathon date and London Marathon date. I changed my plan and decided I would race at Manchester for England Masters place. So while still wanting to go sub three, I wanted to also qualify for England Masters marathon distance. That was important to me. I was planning on doing that at London because that was another Masters qualifier, but I decided to switch it and move to Manchester Marathon. So Manchester Marathon comes along and wow, what an epic day that was. As I say, it was all a bit uh, last minute, changing the plan, but I felt really, really good and I was so prepared and ready for it. But things happen on the day, which we, we, we don't know whether it's gonna happen, not happen. And it was within the first sort of five, six miles where I took my first gel and then all of a sudden my stomach didn't feel good at all. And I felt like vomiting and I didn't feel good at all. And when you're marathon racing and you're at your peak, for me to go sub three, everything had to be 100%. And unfortunately, it wasn't. My mind was being occupied about, am I going to vomit? Am I going to be able to finish? So on the fly of the foot, again, adaptable, flexible during the race, I then changed my race strategy and decided not to take certain gels because if I was taking them and I was feeling sick, it would have just come back out and maybe the race would have been over. So I changed the nutrition plan. So I moved it from plan A to, I made up a plan B. I don't ever had a plan B or C. I'll just go all out, you know, and, uh, and you just adapt it as you go along really. So no real plan, but I knew if I take less, I, my stomach should be able to cope. But unfortunately taking less meant I depleted and slowed down um, where in the last few miles I just didn't have it in my legs and but still came in in a new personal best lifetime best of three hours and two minutes and I was so over the moon yeah I mean disappointed that I didn't come sub three it was so close but within two minutes with all that had gone on I was so so happy with that and uh, yeah absolutely amazing so a week later London Marathon comes along and would you believe it, a couple of weeks before Manchester Marathon itself, a friend of a friend, family member, had a spare room. So I went to stay with them and I thought, right, let's go for it. But still at this point, I needed to check, have I recovered enough from Manchester? So whilst I was doing it for Prevent Breast Cancer and which are all the challenges I'm doing this year is for Prevent Breast Cancer, I decided, you know, I was going to decide last minute whether I would race it or not. So I took everything with me, registered, and you can always cancel. I think right up to the Saturday night, you can defer on London Marathon. So I decided that uh, I felt good enough to start. So I go to the start and then see how I get on, so to speak. And uh, whilst I did finish, there was a number of challenges, a number of toilet stops, and it was cold and it was wet because I was taking it easy. For me, I felt really cold and it wasn't very pleasant at all, which is why I probably picked up the pace in the second half of the race and came in in a massive negative split for the actual race itself. Thoroughly enjoyed the event, absolutely amazing. Yes, got it done, got another marathon done. So that was the two marathons in the month of April. There's no finish line like it. London Marathon, we love you. So the mileage for April, the kilometrage was 251 kilometers. Not a lot, but hey, two marathons in there and some training runs and keeping it easy and recovering. So now we're coming into May, yeah? But before we even got to May, I decided to uh, enter a couple of races to see if I could qualify for all three England Masters distances. Because would you believe I got notified just after London that I'd qualified for England Masters Marathon place. I got my place, so the goal was achieved. Whether it was London, Manchester, the goal was to qualify England Masters Marathon team for 20 
24, yes, or 20, end of 2023, I think the particular race is. So I did it, job done, but I thought, what if, what if I could try the 10K race and a half marathon race? Because there was a couple of races coming up in May. I hadn't booked them, but I did check with a number of people, professionals who know what they're doing, and asked about recovery. Would I be able to recover in time? So it was now game on, recover, recover, recover. Recovery, recovery, recovery. So we come into May and the first of the races, whilst I wasn't racing, I was the 45 minute pacer for the Birmingham 10K. And I had an absolutely brilliant time, loved it. First time I was an official pacer at a great run event and I absolutely loved it. And it brings back memories to me because that was the first race that I'd done. Whilst at Birmingham was the first half marathon, the first ever race I ever took part in was a great run 10K in London. So it brought happy memories and it was great to help people achieve their goals of sub 45. And I came in literally bang on 45 minutes. How brilliant was that? But now we're coming into crunch time with two races where could I recover and whilst I was okay with the 45 minute 10K, I knew that uh, I still hadn't uh, recovered enough from London Marathon and Manchester Marathon to punch out a really hard 10K race. But Bristol 10K comes up next, yeah? And, and that was it, that, that was England Masters qualifier. I really needed to go for this and I did, I did go for it. And I was doing great for the first sort of four kilometers and then things as they do when you're not fully recovered, you're not trained properly, things didn't quite go to plan. So it was a case of just hanging on. So whilst I was slowing down, I still came in in a sub 40 time. And to my amazing surprise, I came in third in my age group. So that qualified me for England Masters at 10K. So that was two out of the three, 10K and marathon done. A week later, fast forward to Manchester, I've got the half marathon. Could I complete the triple crown, a set of three, because there's only three qualifying races you can do at Masters, which is 10K, half marathon and marathon. Could I do it? Well, I turn up to Manchester, yeah? And it's one of those hot, sunny days. So straight away, in my mind, I'm thinking again, adaptable, flexible, I've got to change my race strategy now, whilst I want to go all out racing, it's managing it, pacing and being smart with that. So for me, that race, I absolutely loved it. It was very challenging. Go, 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 Ray Manchester, half marathon. Woohoo, let's go. I say I loved it. I loved it in retrospect, but it was actually really tough on the day. And if you've seen some of the clips. Four miles to go, this is really hurting. Oh God, heat fatigue. Yeah, I, I was proper, um, you know, it was tough. I wouldn't use the word suffering or brutal um, because obviously I chose to race. So I don't self-inflict that upon myself. You know, I think those words have a different meaning, but that's for another video maybe. But it was super tough. And I was so pleased to come under because the goal for me, was to, even with the conditions, I wanted to go sub 90. So that pacer, it was literally chase the pacer, chase the pacer. So I was trying to keep him in sight, but lost him at the um, Manchester City Stadium where he got quite a way ahead of me. But I then started to kick in in the second half and came in again with a massive negative split in the second half of the marathon. And literally, literally with 800 meters to go, to the finish line, I passed the 90 minute pacer. Caught up with the pacer, here he is. 700 minutes to go. I got it, I got it. Oh man. And came in in my sub 30. And to my surprise, I won my age category. Yay! Yes, and qualified for England Masters half marathon team completing the set of three. Yes, the triple crown, all three. Oh man, I, I can't put into words how I feel right now and the joy and elation of having done that. And here I am in June. July, I'll be starting the training for Berlin Marathon. It'll be Berlin, 
think of a title, leave it in the description below. I was thinking Berlin or Bust, um, but that's quite extreme. Maybe the Berlin Express again. But I really, really want to come in sub three hour marathon for that. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let's get this done, yeah? Let's get it done. In total, for the month so far, up to end of May, was 1,230 kilometers, which for a lot of people doesn't sound much, yeah? 764 miles, and I know June is pretty light because I haven't really been doing much running. It's been predominantly walking as I train for the Camino de Santiago, end of September, beginning of October for Prevent Breast Cancer. You can donate in the link below. Thank you very much, that would be great. But yeah, the running training really does start in July. I've had a few little niggles and giggles and jiggles or whatever that I need to uh, control and keep an eye on. And uh, as I say, I'm currently seeing a physio dealing with that and I'll probably check out with a podiatrist as well to see uh, what may be going on down below the waist, so to speak. So whether it was that ultra walk that maybe triggered something or it was before that, I don't know. But I always remain hopeful and I always enjoy. For me, it's about the joy of running. I enjoy sharing these videos with you and hopefully this has given you some hope that you will go on and do some great things as well because as I said at the beginning winning isn't always about coming first it's about just winning in life and doing the best that we can and when it comes to a race you are guaranteed that I will do the best yeah that's all I can do and whatever the result is the result is the result as long as I've done my best that's all I can do Thank you so much for watching everyone. Love you all. Hopefully you've enjoyed this half yearly review and the little cut in with winning. Yes, I know. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. To share it and it inspires people of all ages what we do. You never know who's watching these videos. So maybe a little favour I can ask of you guys is share this video with all your friends, family, wherever they may be, whether they're runners, non-runners, and maybe it'll give them some motivation, inspiration to... Uh, take up running or just be more active. Gotta go guys. Peace out. Mwah. Hasta la vista baby. Ciao. Hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. We have started the Birmingham 10k Woo! and half marathon. Here we go, go, go.